So welcome to the last tutorial on designing lessons for interactive whiteboards. And this one is about clickers. And when I teach this, I usually have this in the experience section, but it doesn't really relate because it's a little different. It gets feedback, kind of, but the instructor still has to run it. But it doesn't really fit well into any of the categories. So here I can put it in something separate. So I'm going to switch to the webcam real fast. So this here is the clicker. Pull it back a little bit. As you can see it's kind of like a little cell phone. It's kind of a little complicated. And so what it does is when I, when I start the question, then it gives you the options in the screen here and you push these buttons on the side to answer it. So let's go back to the screen real fast. So here's an example question. In what order does a bill become a law? Send to the house, or send to the other house, committee hearings, send to president, bring to floor, bill introduced, president signs or vetoes. You can make multiple choice questions, but those are really easy. This one I think is a little more interesting because you have to put this in order. So I push this button to start the question. And let me switch back to webcam mode so I can show you what it looks like for the students. So there are, whoops, there are the options. I think it's mirroring, so it's a little confusing. Notice that it gives me A, B, C, D, and E, even though it said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For some reason, it lets you put on numbers on the question, but the clicker only has letters. So then if I were to push the buttons here, it put, picks the order. I don't think I'm doing this right, so I'll probably be wrong. Let's just pretend I, I'm putting in the right answers. And then after I put in my order, then it gives me the option to send it in. So I send it in. And as the instructor, I see that one of the, one of the students has answered. Since there's only one of me, I can stop it. And it anonymously tells me the different responses. So it only says 3.1% because it expected 32 answers, um, because we have 32 clickers. So it's better just to look at the numbers. Anyway, this is great because it gives the students a chance to answer anonymously and not have to worry about going up and doing something wrong in front of their peers. So then you can see how many people got the correct answer, which this is most definitely not the correct answer. And you can use that as a point to discuss to see if, if maybe something they didn't quite pick up on something that you're explaining. So in addition, you can do true, false, you can do multiple choice, and you have my favorite, which is you can send in a text question. So I think this is great in science because you can have them start thinking about the ideas and, and um, using some, some creativity because in science, a lot of times you spend too much time looking at facts and not enough time being creative. So this gives them a chance to be creative and think how you can apply a concept and therefore it becomes more concrete, it becomes more interesting. So the visible spectrum is made in a small part of the total electromagnetic spectrum. X-rays, for example, use non-visible rays. What other non-visual, how else could we use the non-visual spectrum? Start this, let me switch to webcam. And it gives me a chance here to text in my answer. So I'm going to push an A, it shows up a little A there. Um, so let me just put one in real fast. I'm just putting in night vision. send it in, not finishing because I think I'm about to run out of time. So I stop that. No, and it gives me all the different answers. So it doesn't say night vision, but this way you can have students put up their ideas and you can see other speculations. And it gives a great chance to think of the material before you start learning the facts.